How's it going everyone? I hope you're all doing good. Welcome to another study session. In this one we are going to be discussing anatomical planes. Now the reason I've decided to do this is because we've recently been looking at the anatomy of the arms and soon I'm going to discuss how these move. And so in order to easily discuss movements there's a few things we need to cover including anatomical planes and also the types of joints that exist in the body that allow us to move in various ways. So, as always, I'll be approaching this the same way as I do with most subjects that I cover in this series, and I'm going to create some drawings in this sketchbook whilst I explain everything. So, I think I briefly mentioned the standard anatomical position in the previous study session. Here I am drawing the entire skeleton from reference in this position in my sketchbook. I know we have yet to cover some of these features of the skeleton but for the purpose of what we are discussing here this will be helpful. You see the standard anatomical position as the name suggests is a, a general position for the human figure that you've probably seen before. Maybe on some posters in a hospital or in the science lab at school it's a, a scientifically agreed upon reference position to describe anatomical positions so you'll probably see an image of the figure in this position with a lot of text around it labeling various parts. Now in the anatomical position the body is upright directly facing forward the feet are flat and facing forward and the upper limbs are at the body's side with the palms also facing forward. So this drawing in my sketchbook is the skeleton in a standard anatomical position. For the sake of continuity I've also drawn this to eight head units using the Loomis proportional system that we've been relying on throughout this series from the start. This will be useful for me to refer to at a later date. So that's something that we'll probably come back to because now what I will do on the page next to this is draw the same complete skeleton in this anatomical position but instead of us looking at this from the front I'm going to draw this on a three quarter view. The reason I'm doing this is because it's probably best to view these planes that I'll discuss in a moment like this. So again this is still the skeleton in a standard anatomical position it's just being drawn from a different view for the purpose of it being easier to explain the anatomical planes. Now to understand these anatomical planes I suppose you firstly need to understand what a plane is, right? Well if you've watched any of my perspective drawing tutorials you'll know that a plane is essentially a flat surface such as the sides of a box for instance and this flat surface can be placed on different angles. Now it's the same principle when we talk about the anatomical planes. A quick google search will bring up images that look like this in which the human figure has been divided in different directions using some flat surfaces. These are the anatomical planes, each of them dividing the figure in different ways which is why they have different names. So let's divide up this skeleton the same way and learn more about them. Let's begin with the coronal plane, also referred to as the frontal plane because this is the plane that is seen from the front. The coronal plane divides the body into two front and back portions. Next there is the sagittal plane, also known as the medium plane because this is placed at the median line of the body, dividing it into two equal halves, being the left side and the right side. Finally there is the transverse plane also known as the horizontal plane because this divides the body at the halfway point in this horizontal direction creating what is referred to as a cross section. This is similar to a, a CT scan at a hospital. Now we have yet to cover the actual terms used to describe various types of movement but now that we are aware of these anatomical planes I'll be able to refer to them to describe everything more specifically and you'll understand what I mean when we get to that in the next video. So this is all I plan to cover in this one but seeing as this would be a, a rather short video if I end it here I'm going to also discuss some directional terms and these are good to know but I don't think they are essential but again for the sake of being able to say that I've covered them I may as well do so. 
So going back to my front view of the skeleton in the anatomical position here, and I'm going to make a few notes to describe a list of terms related to the anatomical position. And a few of these you've probably heard of before when I've been referencing the different parts of a bone. This is because these terms are widely used in anatomy, whether you are looking at a bone in isolation or the figure as a whole. These terms are used relative to the structure you are looking at. Firstly, here we are looking at the figure from an anterior view, meaning from the front. If we was looking at it from the back, it would be a posterior view, and from the side, it would be a lateral view. Here I'm creating some smaller sketches to make a note of this. Remember that I said the sagittal plane divides the body at the median line? Well, here I can also draw that like so. Whenever you hear the term medial, it means that it's towards this line, near the middle of the body. The opposite of this is referred to as lateral. This is away from the middle of the body. Next, we have superior and inferior, which is equivalent to above and below. If something is towards the head and upper part of a structure, it's referred to as superior. A superior view would be looking at the figure from above. And so the opposite of this, as you might have guessed, is inferior. This is towards the lower part of the structure. An inferior view would be looking at the body from below. There is also proximal and distal, equivalent to near and far, and this tends to be in respect to the trunk of the body, or in general the origination of a structure. So for instance for the arm, the proximal direction would be near the shoulders, where the arm is closer and connects to the trunk of the body, and the distal direction would be towards the hand, where it is further from the body, and that point of connection. And this can also be the same for the legs, the upper leg would be proximal and the foot would be distal. Finally, there is superficial and deep, equivalent to closer to the surface or further from the surface. The surface in this case being the body. This one is quite hard to illustrate but it's easy to understand. And so those are some directional terms that you'll often see used to describe the anatomical position of something. Now, in addition to the planes that we covered in this video as well, I'd say that we are one step closer to being able to understand movement. As I said earlier, in the next one, we will look at the types of joints that exist in the skeleton and how they are responsible for the various types of motion. With that being said, I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, then please leave a like. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one. If you enjoyed the content I create, then do consider becoming a patron on Patreon. You will gain access to exclusive tutorials, study documents, process papers, real-time drawing footage and more. Plus, you will also be supporting me in a more personal way. Other than that, thank you for watching this video and I'll see you soon.